welcome to California Bulls football. I'm Fran Tarkinen, your play-by-play -play host for this exciting professional football season. And now let's take a look at the Bulls. The Bulls may not have the prettiest record in the league, but they certainly have the prettiest owner. Mrs. Diane Barrow, who acquired the team in a scandalous divorce settlement, will have to prove that being a woman will in no way affect her relationship with her players. She has come under fire for acquiring quarterback Bob Dorsey, who critics feel can no longer get the job done. Along with the team came her ex-husband's nephew, Roger Barrow, the general manager, who has repeatedly denied being a puppet for the underworld Arcola family. One of Bob Dorsey's primary receivers will be lightning quick Mace Petty. Some say Diane Barrow made a big mistake in re-signing coach Ernie DiNardo, while others say there's no finer motivator in all of football. Mrs. Barrow has asked her Bulls to rededicate themselves to football this season. And let's face it, with the talent on this team, the Bulls have the capability of being a finely honed football machine who might just go all the way. Can a woman take these unruly Bulls by the horn and turn them into a winning organization? That's what we're here to find out. I want to go with you some of our rules for road trip decorum. Right. Right. I know, I know, it's tough. But remember, a broad owns a team now, so we have to put up with this kind of shit. Oh. All players must wear clothes in public places. Oh. Oh. Come on. Hey, I know it's tough. But at least try and have your underwear on when you're in the hotel lobby. Oh. The second major thing we try to stress is punctuality. Oh. And there's a third rule concerning concealed weapons. Oh. Tell me what's on your mind, Kessler. All right, Roger. Now listen to me. Are you on a secure phone? Yes, I'm on a secure phone. Good. I've been talking to our principal, and he's had an idea that's perfect. What's the idea? To catch Diane Barrow the same way she caught Paul, with her pants down. After Sunday's game, I'll have a piece of videotape that Diane Barrow will give anything to burn. Where do you expect to do this? I'll explain everything to you when I see you in Dayton. Goodbye. You know, sometimes I think my sense of irony is thrilling. Don't you, Jeff? I'll tell you what's thrilling, Paul. The 50,000 you're going to give me for that tape. Therefore, having determined that our pre-tax revenues for the next fiscal year will not exceed 10% of current levels, it is my position that our lease agreement with Municipal Stadium should remain fixed at the present rate. Hi. Hi. Ready for our shopping spree? Just a second. Uh, yours truly, Diane Barrow, owner and president of California Bulls. Well, I've no idea what to buy. What's it like in Dayton this time of year? Oh, ever been to New Orleans during Mardi Gras? Yeah. Well, it's absolutely nothing like that. Come on. Uh-oh. Diane, I'm going to ask you one more time. Roger, I'm not going to have lunch with the Arcolas. Diane, will you come to lunch with the Arcolas? I've nothing to say to them. Rona, talk to him. She has nothing to say to them. This is business, Diane. I don't do business with gangsters. Who says they're gangsters? The FBI, the IRS, three Senate subcommittees. They're businessmen. We happen to have some long-term contracts with them. They'd like to meet the new owner. It's just good PR. Sounds more like good BS. Personally, I could care less. I just thought since our contracts with them were for beer, food, parking, laundry, garbage. Garbage? All right, Roger. I'll talk to them about beer, food, laundry, parking, bribery, extortion, ticket scalping. Don't have a big lunch. Just have a salad. <laughs> hey, Dorsey. I caught you announcing the college all-star game last week. You gave some good insight into the game. Thank you, Bubba. I'm hoping to do network play-by-play -play when I finish with football. Man, you know, when we traded for you, I said to Jethro, Jethro, what do we need another old, broken-down, dumb quarterback for? But you ain't dumb at all. Well, thank you, Bubba. I'll be watching for you on TV. See this by Alice? 
You want the other half, make sure the car doesn't have a scratch on it when I get it back. You want good service? You pay for it. Ah, Mrs. Barrow, I'd like you to meet Vince Arcola and his uncle, Sal Arcola. Mrs. Barrow, please, make yourself comfortable. We're gonna have a lovely, lovely lunch. May I do anything else for you right now? Yeah, leave. Sometimes I feel like killing that white hand son of a bitch. Bubba, the way you breathe, it sounds like he's gonna kill you first. <laughs> Isn't this great? Like being in the Rose Parade, right, guys? <laughs> 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 hey, wait for me. Dog breath. Lift up those knees. Let's see some work there. I heard you guys with nine point favors over Dayton. Is that a fact? If I were a betting man, I said that makes a pretty interesting proposition. Hey, try some of my fettuccine. Uh, I don't believe so, thank you. Good. More for me. Listen, Rookie, here's something you ought to know. When we play a Dayton, there's just two numbers you gotta keep calling. Klondike 5, 96, 14, and 55 Jones. I never heard of those plays, Bob. They plays are phone numbers of Polish stewardesses. <laughs> what am I gonna do with two Polish stewardesses in Dayton? Everything, but go slow so they don't lose their place. Yeah, well, thanks, fellas, but I'm gonna take Betty Ann with me. You're gonna take your own wife on a road trip? Why? Well, Betty Ann's always wanted to see Dayton. Rookie! Such a lovely occasion. It should not be spoiled by the talk of business. However, it's... We're not happy. I am. I thought the food was wonderful. I'm not talking about the food. I'm talking about you and the way you run the balls. Anyone for dessert. Forget dessert. None for me. Who needs it? Listen, Mrs. Barrow. My uncle and I had a certain business agreement with your late husband. My husband's not dead, Mr. Arcola. We're just divorced. A man divorced from you is truly dead. The point is... That we're in bed with you with the tickets, we're in bed with you in the parking lot, we're in bed with you in the garbage, we're in bed with you all over the place. I beg your pardon. Excuse my nephew, sometimes he speaks loosely. We expect you to honor those agreements. That is, we expect to have beer in your stadium. Are you threatening me, Mr. Arcola? I again, forgive my nephew, sometimes he speaks before he thinks. What's it gonna be, Mrs. Barrow? My tickets or your beer? I want my answer now. Vincenzo, Mrs. Barrow is a lady. And a lady needs time before she says yes. Now, shall we say one week? They liked you, I can tell. They threatened Especially me. Especially Sal. He had that certain look in his eye. You're probably the same look he has when he bumps somebody off. Diane, that's all in your imagination. The Arcolas are businessmen. OK, so maybe Vince isn't smooth. Maybe Sal is too smooth. Oh. The bottom line is, our company is in business with their company. Hello, Barbara. This is the big Bubba speaking. <laughs> you sweet little girl. Do I, do I what? Will I what? <laughs> oh, Barbara, you know what turns me on. <laughs> Bubba, who was that? That was Barbara Ann. The girl who will cater to my every whim when we get to Dayton. She is special. The girl in Chicago was special. The girl in Toronto was special. The girl in Minneapolis was special. You say that about every girl in every city we play in. No, this one I'll marry. But were you already married? Earlene ain't gonna live forever. Oh, is Earlene sick? Yeah, she's sick. You'd be sick too if your mouth never stopped moving. Tell you what, Jethro, I'm going to Dayton to see my sweet Bob, 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 Ann. Get a light. Don't smoke. 
Yeah. Neither do I. Hey, you're one of the Arcolas, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Vince. What do you say? Go for a little walk. Yeah. This is better than taking a little ride. <laughs> Tell me, you're always the last guy to leave practice. Got to do everything I can to get ready for something. Yeah. I remember the game you played for Texas Tech against SMU. You threw that touchdown pass with no time left on the clock. You were beautiful. That was 16 years ago. You must have had some money on that game. 16 years ago? What'd you have? Three knee operations, two separated shoulders. You must like getting whacked. It's a paycheck. I know a job where you could use your face and nobody will step on it. Like what kind of job? Like Monday Night Football is looking for a new commentator. Like you on a network? Hey, like you don't want me to put the word in for you? I won't. You just want a little something in return, right? Well, not that much. You guys are nine-point favorites uh, Sunday. That's too much. Seven's more like it. I don't shave points. You know, I didn't have money on the SMU game, but I did in the playoff games a couple of years ago. We threw the incomplete pass to you guys, standing all by himself in the end zone. You won by three, spread with seven. A lot of people figured you uh, threw that pass away. Ball slipped out of my hand. Hey, can you make that ball slip again? Roger. I found the leading man for a little soap opera. Great, who is he? David Trumbridge, the assistant manager of the hotel where the balls will be staying. What a wonderful coincidence. He just asked that we do something to put Mrs. Barrow in the mood. I'm sure it'll be an easy pill to swallow. See you in Dayton. You'd be doing the show here in this studio. Did I show you your dressing room? No, it doesn't matter. We'll redecorate it for you. Fur walls, bullfighter posters, all the stuff you jocks like. Mr. Kent, I appreciate the tour and the job offer, but uh, why the sudden interest in me? We've had an eye on you for a long time. Football has already made your name a household word. You're good looking, you can talk, and you've got a friend who thinks you're destined for stardom. Vince Arcola? This sports wrap-up show is the final stepping stone to Monday Night Football. Here's a contract. Have your people look it over. But we need an answer quick. Uh, why don't we say, uh, by noon Sunday? You know, for the first time in my life, I feel like this is right. That this is exactly right. Oh, I know what you mean. You do? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Mm. Oh, I wish this moment could last forever. Oh, it can. It can. What? Hey, get your ass out of there. I can't hold it any longer. Hello, Mr. Dorsey. Looks like you've got some heavy reading there. Another paternity suit? <laughs> no, no, I haven't had one all year. Last year, I led the league. Guess the writers are right. Must have lost a step. Maybe it's time to start thinking about retirement. Retirement from what? Well, there is life after football. It's important for players to think about their future. Guys like me aren't really uh, too well prepared for much after their careers are over, so sometimes they have to grab what they can, even if the uh, price is a little high. Well, I suppose you have to decide whether what you want is really worth it. And I'd read the fine print very carefully. I'd like a room for me and my wives. Your wives? Yeah. How wonderful that you're all so close. We work at it, don't we wives? <laughs> What's the name, please? Uh, Smith. Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. Smith. Sure. May I say, Mrs. Barrow, that we are honored to have you and your team in our hotel. Well, I find that hard to believe, but thank you. Yes, uh, I'd like a room for me and my sister, please. This is your sister? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a problem with that? No, but you're black. Well, I know I'm black, and so does she, don't you, sis? Right on, bro. The name is Smith. Yeah, please. I know. Smith. Thank you. Have a good day.
Okay. Hi. I believe you have a room uh, for us? Don't let me guess. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. How'd you know? <laughs> Get off it, asshole. This is my wife. Oh, sure she's your wife. And if I paid her a hundred dollars, she'd be my wife, too. Now wait a minute, buddy. What do you think? You think we're all stupid here? We've got eyes. We see what's going on. Why can't you guys just walk up and say, Hi, I'm with the football team. Give me a room so I can screw this whore. It's okay, Betty. The good Lord has just presented us with a cynic whose path we must correct. Now just stand here while I correct him. I love doing God's work. Come on, Betty Ann. Roger. Everything set? The camera's in place, and we own the assistant manager. Here, give this to him. It's guaranteed to knock Mrs. Barrow out. Gotcha. I'd appreciate it if you'd escort Mrs. Barrow to a room, personally. My pleasure, Mr. Barrow. My Roger. You know what I say, you want good service, you pay for it. This way, please. Thank you. Bob Rand, please, let me in. Bubba Kincaid, I want you down on your knees and beg. Bob Ryan, I'm down on my knees. Please, let me in. Hello, Bubba, everything all right? Couldn't be better, Miss Barrow. Vince, Bob Dorsey here. Uh, I want to thank you for setting things up for me at that TV station. Hey, don't thank me today. Thank me Sunday. Look, Vince, isn't there something else I can do for you besides shaving points? Uh, how about endorsing a line of clothing for you? Putting my name to maybe a football summer camp, something like that. Dorsey, win one for the Gipper. Just don't win it by more than eight. And here we have a lovely view of downtown Dayton. I didn't know they had one. A downtown, I mean. Uh, uh, Bellman, would you show Mrs. Barrow the rest of the suite? Let me just see if I can fix this picture. Good work. I can see everything. Oh, my goodness. Champagne in the afternoon. This is Dayton, Mrs. Barrow. We live life to the fullest. Wow. Thank you. Cheers. Room service. Go away. You don't want no more food. You're not room service. I have something for you. Where? Me. I'm a surprise from your players. Do you know what today is? Yes. This is your lucky day. No. This is Saturday, sweetheart. The day before a game. I'm the coach, and there's no way you're going to sap my strength. I need every ounce of it for the game. Why don't you come back tomorrow around 8 o'clock? So take it from me, sports fans. The Bulls might be nine-point favorites going in, but I predict that tomorrow they'll fall flat on their faces. Go, Dayton. Go away, Dayton. Oh, one glass of champagne. What do they use for air in Dayton? Who is it? Room service. Huh. I didn't order any room service. No, but I did. Uh, <laughs> can we talk? Mr. Dorsey, <laughs> what a surprise. What the hell? The assistant manager's supposed to show up once she gets on. Oh, this is better than we planned. The owner and her quarterback in the hay. Oh, Paul will love it. I better call off the assistant manager. Do you want some champagne? 
Do you always drink this much before a game, Mr. Dorsey? No, ma'am. Usually I'm drunk by now. But I wanted to talk to you, so I stayed sober. Somebody wants me to shave points tomorrow. Shave points? That's serious, huh? So what do you think I should do? I think we should have another little drink. And then we'll talk. I'll get you a glass. <sighs> whoa, whoa. You didn't exactly stay sober, did you? Well, I don't know what's wrong with me. Where did you get this bottle? Oh, from the assistant manager. Well, go ahead, don't stand on ceremony. Go ahead and have some. Take as much as you want of whatever you want. <laughs> oh. Barrel. It's the assistant manager. Are you decent? Ah, shit, it's too late. Oh, down, son of a bitch! Who put you up there? Oh, Jesus! Wait there for the cleaning lady. You bastard! No! Damn it! Ah, I know, Daddy. I know. You raised me to be a gentleman. Damn it. Barbara Ann, these tender moments I spend with you are precious and few. For me too, Barbara. Six seconds to go in the game. Dayton has called for a timeout. The Bulls, with an eight-point lead, can run out the clock if they get a first down on the next play. But you can start the dinner, Mama. This one's history. It's the first time ever that the Bulls have won the first two games of the season. It's got to be a great road trip for the new owner, Diane Barrow. The Bulls come out and send Williams wide to the right, Petty wide to the left. Nate must guard against the pass, but the Bulls need a first down desperately. He takes a snap, drops back. Oh, he hits Ty Taylor over the middle. First down, Bulls. And 30 seconds, and I'm home three. We beat the spread, boys. That's a good boy. Run the clock. I want me, boys. I want me. As the clock winds down to the precious few seconds, the Bulls will be 2 0 while Dayton remains winless. 68 special D. Why don't we run it out, Bob? We got a one. You do, asshole, about the spread? Me? Shit, no. Not once it went over seven. 68 special deep. We're going for it. On one. Ready? Hey! And this most likely is the last play of the game. Dorsey will line up over center and should go down on one knee as soon as he gets the snap. I know. That was my favorite play, and I'm sure Bob is going to agree with me. Oh, what's this? Dorsey drops back. He's going to throw. He's got more than the open. Oh, touchdown ball. Unbelievable. Dorsey has really added insult to injury. He has humiliated a hapless Dayton team. The Bulls continue their unorthodox play. Bob Dorsey may be old, but he's not dull. This is your scrambling announcer for Antarctic and saying goodbye from Dayton. Final score. Most of what happened last night, but what I'd like to know is, did anything happen? Well, let me put it this way. I've never disappointed a lady in my life. <laughs> <laughs>